Welcome. I'm going to take this Konica 50mm lens apart. It's a Hexanon AR series, uh, f1.7. Nice little lens, obviously a very vintage lens, probably uh, in the around, let's say, 40 years old-ish. So, one thing about vintage lenses that I've discovered um, in my travels thus far <clears throat> is that they uh, they need a little service after 40 years or so. Um, what happens generally is that dust gets inside them. Uh, also, other things can happen, sort of uh, fungus or a mold type of uh, situation can occur. Um, either one can be rectified. Uh, what, what needs to happen is that you need to get the, the lens open. And the thing is that these weren't made um, for just anybody to tinker with. Uh, the way they go together is very specific, uh, sometimes a little bit complicated I'd say. Um, you have to be super careful and you really do need the right tools, uh, I've discovered. So you, what you're looking at here, these are the things I'm going to use. I don't think I'll need anything else. Uh, just a microfiber cloth. I just have this one to lay things down as I pull them apart. Uh, you know, nice uh, little uh, air blower. Um, spanner wrench. This is very useful. Uh, all of this is specific for cameras. Uh, this is a, what's called a little lens sucker. Uh, I'll show you what I do with that if you don't already know. Uh, and these are little uh, little gripper rubber uh, cones that are used to grip things. Uh, they are very useful too and all of this is again is for camera lens specific uh, service work. So <clears throat> you know, there's two ways you could look at this. You could try to go from the back um, the problem with that generally is that the first thing that you're going to run into most likely is the uh, actual aperture. Um, and now with that, you don't want to mess with that, uh, ideally. Um, if, if you can avoid it, I'd rather not because there's nothing wrong with that. And that's a very a little delicate little uh, assembly, right? Um, it can be done and sometimes you don't have a choice if you need to uh, do some service on it. So now I'm going to take this uh, particular, I think this is a good size. Now there's two ways, this one, will, I got it on this uh, with that. Uh, this one also has a couple of small notches that would let me, I could actually use the spanner wrench to remove this outer ring. Uh, that's not always the case. Every brand and even within a brand, I mean they don't, they certainly don't make, oh actually more than what I anticipated came out there, that's fine. Now I should say that I've already done this. I've already disassembled this and put it back together once. Um, so I, I kind of scouted ahead. I want to show you though, that usually doesn't happen quite so easily. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is with the spanner wrench, I should be able to get that to turn. I want to make it so you can see what I'm doing somewhat if possible. So what I'm doing is there's two small uh, notches in this plastic ring. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And the spanner wrench will fit into those notches. So that that's the first piece that comes off. There's a little uh, rubber O-ring there and then this. So that's your first that's the front section of the camera lens. Um, <clears throat> now what we're confronted with is uh, there's this beveled piece here that appears to be holding in the next lens and what I think I want to do with that is take uh, let's see which size would be best see that would be so the idea with the, the this little rubber that rubber has like tires on a car, uh, great grip, okay. So that's what you're doing here, it's, it's friction. So this pushed against this and then turned. Now this came out easier than it did the first time because I've already done this, right? So I've kind of made my life a little easier, but what happens is you use these and then this is the piece that comes out. And you can see it's got a bevel to it and it's threaded on the back side. Okay, that did that. 
Now what we're left with, and this is where this lens lens sucker can be useful. You don't need it, need it, but it does make life a little easier. So there's the first lens out. Um, and just lay that down like so. So what it is, like I've already gone through this, I took this lens apart, cleaned it, as I've mentioned twice already. <laughs> keep repeating myself, but I can still see a fleck of dust inside uh, and it's showing up on uh, on pictures. Uh, where you'll really see it is if you take a picture of the with a bright sky background, if your lens is dusty internally, uh, you'll see it and you'll see big, there are big pieces of dust. You'll be like how, it, it kind of like, wow, how does that get in there? How could that possibly ever get in there, something like that? But it will. So this is a, the second lens. So this is kind of like, you know, we're just going like this. This is the order of things. Now when you do this, of course, it's very important to consider other things. Like, you know, if you look at this lens, if you look at the side profile, I don't know if my camera will we'll be able to focus in. Maybe I gotta try that. How does that look? Anyway. Oh, autofocus. Wonderful. Wonderfully non-functional it would seem. Either way, this lens has a profile. Each lens most likely does. It's concave on the front and it's actually convex, meaning it's, it's, it's scooped inwards on the back side. So it's very important to take note of those things because you pull this, I've done this, I've made this mistake with a different lens. Pull the thing apart and if you're not observing very closely each part and how it's oriented, you're not going to remember it. And good luck finding this information. There is no documentation available. I don't know if it ever existed. It was probably internal trade secrets for these companies. The workers who worked and assembled these knew it because they were trained, but this stuff wasn't put out there for everyone to know, most likely. Maybe I'm wrong. Either way, I, I never have managed to find anything on the internet that is of any use in terms of, you know, a, a parts blow up and sort of a, a description of how these things come together. So it's a matter of, that's why I'm making this video. And I have <clears throat> three other uh, lenses in this series, the Hexanon AR series, they're all prime lenses. I've got a 28 millimeter, a 135, and a 200. They're all very nice lenses. I'm, I like them uh, quite a lot, actually. I like using them, and they, the image quality is really good, I, I feel. Um, so I think they're worth, you know, restoring. Uh, but I'm going to do separate videos on each because they're all different um, and slightly and two completely different. Like, you know, there's not one system that a company uses in, in my experience to, to make a lens. It seems, you know, that can, it can vary drastically. So again, here, there's another, now, there's a two large obvious notches in this section. It's a sort of an aluminum um, retaining ring of sorts here. So I'm going to use the spanner wrench again. You really have to be careful. And it's probably best to actually lock it down. Don't let it be loose in this case because you're less likely to have a slip happen if you do that. Let's see if I got it right. Uh, no, see it's too narrow. Let's see if that's about right. A little bit more. Yeah, I think that'll do it. Okay. All right, so this one was a little trickier to get out. This one took a, a little more force. Now it's not so bad because I've already done it one time, but first time around after 40 years, this thing's probably never been apart since the day it was first put together in the factory. Um, and it was a little stubborn, I'll tell you. Um, once you get it going, it's fine. So what I'm trying to do is track down a piece of dust. It's on one of these lenses. I don't know which one it is. And there's a way of kind of <clears throat> deducing that just by, you know, uh, taking the lenses out just until you have just one or two and then you start adding them in until you see where it is and then you can wipe it off. And uh, I'll, I'm, I don't think I'll go through that in this video. It's, it's fairly straightforward. So now that lens is, is sort of part of that section, okay, it's, it's sort of a t in some way attached, probably this is somehow mechanically pressed in. Uh, so now we're looking at the, we're down to the, there's the uh, 
the aperture and you know what uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off screen for a second I'm just going to look through it see if I can see that dust speck like is it in side is it on is it on this side of it I don't see it so I don't think so um, what I can do is just blast that out as well now the big thing that I've ran into doing this uh, you know you're, you're attempting to remove uh, dust but you know reality of the situation is that where you live in our homes and the air is filled with dust so you know as you take this apart you're probably putting in some dust even though you think you're taking it all out it's uh, you know and dust and static can attract dust and all these things so when you're rubbing and wiping you might create a bit of static that is attracting more dust back onto the glass things of that nature so it's a bit tedious uh, of a process <clears throat> you have to be really careful it'd be amazing to have some kind of a clean room where there was no dust to do this kind of thing you never have to worry about that but unfortunately it's not realistic so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna look through each piece and see if I can find the, uh, the spec I'm after um, no, I don't see it on that one, but I am just going to give it a wipe with uh, what I can do. I have these, I've got these lens wipes, so I might as well use them up. Made by Zeiss. Oh, Mr. Zeiss himself. Or Mrs. Zeiss. For, it's a little dry. This is probably getting a little old. But anyway, it's um, still got some moisture on it. And I'm going to just go across each one. And if you had like, so again, if you have a lens that has fungus on it and you do this, well, you know, you're, you're going to clean the glass off and then you're going to have a really great lens, potentially again, once you're finished with that process, you should have a really good quality lens. If the lens, especially the lens that starts out good, these Konica Hexanon AR series lenses, I believe in their day were, were, were a decent quality lens, they weren't cheap garbage. So. There's no reason they still don't function. They won't be every bit as good. I mean, you know, the, the fundamental principles of optics hasn't changed in 40 years. <laughs> you know, it's been understood for hundreds of years, really. The principles is just refining techniques and manufacturing. But beyond that, it's, it's you know, an old lens is still can be a very excellent lens. And that's kind of maybe a fallacy that people can fall into is this idea that, you know, new is better always. That's not always true, I don't believe. Okay, so now doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm just gonna kinda so all I'm doing is just trying to clean these lenses thoroughly. I don't want any dust on them because it shows up and uh, I don't like it. So I want it gone. Ideally I want that gone. So now, this sits in here, like so, and I can just start it off by hand, and uh, thread it most of the way in by hand, and then from there, I'll just finish it off with the spanning spanner wrench, the spanning spanner, the spanning wrench. The wrench that doth span. The spanneth. The wrench doth spanneth. All right. Yeah. And of course, I mean, you don't want to let that slip down and drag across the, the glass. That could be uh, unfortunate if that were to occur. So it's, it's definitely good to, to be careful. I'll take your time. This one has quite a bit of a bit of ways to go. It's still pretty. I actually don't have this adjusted. It should be probably just a, a millimeter or two wider, and it wouldn't be slipping so readily. Um, but anyway, let's be careful. Okay, so that's nice and snug. That is snug and into place. So now I'm turn it upside down. Mm. Blast that. 
just keep doing that. Uh, the next lens is this one. I'm just remembering that the, the uh, concave uh, portion of this lens faces to the back. Okay, so and the convex is facing to the front of the of the uh, of the uh, lens. So I'm just. And again, you know, they, like these little tools are not cheap because they're they're kind of unusual specialty tools, but they really do come in handy. I cannot argue with it. It was worth the money, and especially because I kind of find myself collecting these lenses, and it it becomes um, I don't know. It, it becomes more valuable to me to have the proper tools because I know I'm going to be doing this more than once. Unfortunately, these old lenses get dusty, among other things, um, but very common that dust uh, buildup occurs. And in, when that does happen, you know, you really need to address it. So, um, I'm just trying to get all of it. So now this retaining ring is a threaded ring, um, so I can start it by hand. And this is fairly straightforward. Now, not every lens is this easy. Uh, every lens is unique, brand um, wise, and even within a brand, you'll find so many different designs, it seems, um, in terms of, of uh, construction, you know, the way they put the lenses together. Um, so, again, this comes in handy. It just gives you grip. It grips. And it lets me tighten that up nicely. So these things, excellent. You wouldn't think so. I mean, it's just rubber. Um, all of these little things are, are pretty important when you're doing this. So at this point, before I go f fully to just the end of this, I'm just going to look through it. And what I do is I look at a light. I'm going to try and see if... There's anything that I missed uh, in terms of uh, it looks good. It looks good. I don't see anything in there. I think I got what I wanted to get out of there, so that's really good. Um, so just to finish it up, in this case, we have this outer ring, which I can. Now this one, see, this one has one hole only. It doesn't have two holes, so it doesn't let me use the uh, pointed end on my spanner wrench. It has two flat head ends and two sharp pointy ends. I've got little rubber protectors on them, but there's a pointy end. So uh, on some lenses, there'd be two holes in here, and you could put the pointy end and turn it. Now this, for some reason, just has one. So it doesn't let me do that, so that's where, again, this can come in handy to really uh, let me get in there and tighten this down. Tighten this in so it doesn't come loose. I mean, it's, it's more cosmetic. It's just like a finishing ring. It's not as if it uh, has anything to do with the optics. It's just that. And then you can take that and use this to turn that. And... Voila! That's 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 how it's done. That's how you uh, clean up a Konica 50 millimeter f 1.7 Hexanon AR vintage lens made in Japan. Probably somewhere around 1978 or so. This would have been made. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully, that was uh, helpful, informative, and uh, if so, please give me a like, click subscribe, and check back often. Uh, more content on the way. Take care. Bye.